it handles like a baby deer on a frozen lake bed during a windstorm. For those three minutes, <laughs> it's the ride of my life. For everybody else, it's probably horrifying. That's what she said. Welcome to the channel. Today's project is destroying and then rebuilding some of the resale value of our 69 VW Beetle C5 Corvette swap. That's a lot to say. So very worth it. Step one today is gonna to be picking out some fine ass steel. So I took some measurements and went to my local steel place, started poking around their scrap bin, came with these bad boys. The minimum thick Ness that I like to go for is about an eighth of an inch, but as you can see here, basically quadruple tripled it. When in doubt, five sixteenths out. The floor on this contraption has got some weird height differences front and back and side to side. That's where you want the height differences. Makes it a lot easier. There's a couple different things I like to keep in mind when I'm building seat brackets. If I need to raise the seat up a substantial bit, do you want to have the bolts go all the way through it and through the floor and be like, yay long, or nut and bolt or weld to the floor? I don't really think there's anything wrong with either way of doing it until you start approaching the national average of bolt size length, but it's something you should think about when you buy your steel to make sure you can fit a ratchet or a wrench in there to actually tighten down the nut. When I took my wife on a junkyard seat swap finding adventure, the romance is clearly not dead in our house. I was looking for a seat that was pretty small, narrow, and had some rails that didn't have a weird attachment on the front. And in true fashion, the seat she liked oh, had a weird thingy on the front. Went out and ground that off and made it so I could slide some bolts directly through it, mount it the old school way. But before I pulled these seats out, went ahead and made sure that we could fit the thickness of a bolt head between the inner rail and the outer rail. That way it'll still slide. Never made that mistake four, five dozen times. I like to measure the factory seat rail distance front and back. Then I add on an inch, half inch on each side if you want to be precise. That gives me a decent amount of space to get a wrench in there still, but also not see the hardware. And it kind of gives you a little bit of play. So if you get the seat in the wrong spot or you want to move it up, push it back for longer, shorter legs, you got a little bit of wiggle room in there. Feel free to make it however long you think you need. Two, two and a half inches. Wow, that's long. Then I'm either going to throw a few tack welds on this, maybe some self-tapping screws, maybe even through bolt it if we're feeling naughty, to have this as like a stationary thing, and then I will get the side-to-side -side spacing for my bracket from there. Something you run into a lot of times with factory floor plans is they got weird humps, bumps, mounds, and shit all over them. When I'm building custom seat brackets, I like to make my seat bracket touch the floor as much as possible, even if it gives me some weird angles here and there but it kind of matters on your installation. If you're bolting in, well, as long as something actually touches the floor, well, you're probably fine. If you're welding it, well, you probably don't want to fill like a 3 8 inch gap with welding wire. Or maybe you do. I've done it, so it can be done. I have perfected the technique of measuring something one to seven times and then just bringing the saw over to the thing and cutting it to fit. Like just no, don't even use the measurements. Just eyeball it, use a hammer to make that last fitment. It's good to go. Then once I got the seat bracket all mocked into place and tack welded, well, I pulled her out of the car, welded her all up. Look at those welds, but not too close. Yeah, wouldn't want to post those on the internet. <laughs> Listen, there's nothing here that an angle grinder in 15 minutes or more couldn't fix. And before I tossed it back in the car, I hit it with primer, especially in the areas I'm not going to be welding to. Some of the things I'm never going to be able to see again. Go ahead and make it look decent. Nothing but the best. I've chosen to weld and bolt these pig bitches in. Reason A, well, <laughs> it likes to blow through the sheet metal of the VW because it's like razor thin. Anytime I get a welder anywhere near it. Reason number A is, well, I'm also worried about the seat floor tearing if it was ever in an accident or anything went horrifyingly wrong or just existing. And speaking of tearing that floor's ass up, well, the bare minimum here is fender washers, but in a perfect world, you'd use some quarter inch, maybe eighth inch, steel plates underneath the seat bolts to give it some structure so it won't just pull through the floor if it was ever to get hit or pulled on. If you want to see something kind of scary, get underneath an old classic car while somebody's sitting in the seat. It's going to move around a little bit more than, well, they don't build them like they used to. Probably for legal reasons. And to finish it all off nicely, I took some seam sealer, ran around all the edges. I like doing this so if you ever get some water on your floor or you spill something between the seats, doesn't have a way to get underneath there, start rusting out in between your layers of your floor and your seat bracket. And it covers up some of those terrible welds I was talking about earlier. And I then took some black barbecue paint, because clearly that's rock bottom around here, and painted all the seat section black. 
Reason being is this might not get carpeted, so if I look down in there, don't want to see fire engine rust red primer. Yeah, that's not the that's not the vibe I'm going. Well, I mean, it kind of is the vibe we're going for, but I don't want to see it. And I test fitted her one last time, even though it's kind of too late to make any many changes, but. It fit perfect. And then I pulled it right back out again to do some sound deadening. I've actually got another video series where we're testing out different sound deadening locations and doing some decibel readings after to see how well it works. But today we're just slapping some sound deadener in and hoping it works better. Probably wouldn't pass crash tests if it lies dependent on it, but that's halfway there. So another 17 hours times two, you'll have two of them. And if you loved our adventure today, do that thing you know I like in the place that you know I like you doing it. Yeah, that one. Because if you want to see somebody, Gary, <laughs> Gary, what? If you want to see something <laughs> scary, Gary. Ah, God damn it, get out of there. Ah, yeah, okay.